Hello everyone, in today's video I want to show you advanced masking techniques in DaVinci Resolve. This is our before and after. But before we start, I just want to remind you that I have just released my first color grading course, Mastering Color Grading in DaVinci Resolve, and you can access it by clicking on the link below this video. This course is suitable for both studio and free version users, and it teaches advanced color management, primary and secondary color grading techniques, and advanced creative techniques to help you build multiple film looks. This course also includes high-risk footage for practice, and currently it's available at a promotional price, and in the upcoming months I will be adding to it a lot of masterclasses, and if you join the course now, you will have an access to all future masterclasses for free, so I think it's really worth it. And if you like my teaching style, if you like my YouTube videos, I do really encourage you to enroll the course. But now, let's move to today's video. So this is our clip for today. It's been shot in Panasonic Vlog and it has already been color managed. So I have converted it from Log to Rec 709 and these are my color management settings. And again, if you properly want to learn color management in DaVinci Resolve, if you want to know how to properly set up your project and how to use both color space transform workflow and DaVinci Resolve color managed workflow, head to my course below this video as there's a very comprehensive lesson covering it. But now let's start grading step by step. So the first thing we can see is that there's not much color separation in the clip. And by looking at my parade, I can tell that red channel is dominating here. So we have to balance it properly. So let's label our first note accordingly. And I like balancing my clips looking at the vector scope. So let me pull it up. And also I explain properly how to read vector scope and all other scopes and I show different ways of balancing clips in my course but today I will show you how to do it using the offset wheel that allows us to adjust the whole clip uniformly. So basically we have to move our trace from the red side more to the middle to make the clip look balanced. So I will use my offset wheel and I will move it in the opposite direction from red and yellow towards blue and teal and look what's going on with the clip and also what's going on on the vector scope. So I'm moving it to the point where my clip looks as natural as possible. And this is before and after. Huge difference. We got a much better color separation. Now, the next step would be to adjust the exposure as the clip, although it was converted to Rec 709, still looks a bit washed out. And I will also change my vector scope to waveform and here, basically we have to make sure that our waveform is within the range from 0 to 1023. And let's create a new serial node and let's call it exposure. And here I will increase my gain first. Then I will decrease my lift just a touch. And I will decrease gamma as well. And then I'll also play around with the contrast and pivot controls. And this is before and after. Looking nice. And now, before we move to masking techniques, let's boost how the clip looks a bit more. So I'll create a new serial node and I will call it look. And today, I will create a look using the Color Warper tool in Resolve. There's an extensive lesson in my course covering Color Warper as well, so check it out. But today, I will simply boost the teal color a bit by drawing with my mouse over my clip, like this. I'm just pushing that teal color more towards teal. And then I will do the same with the skin. I will add a bit more saturation to it. Like this. And this is before and after. Look at the difference. And we did it all only by using one tool in Resolve. So now our shot is ready to play around with masking. And I will start with the magic mask as I want to separate the main subject from the background. So I'll create a new node and I will call it magic mask. 
And now let's open our magic mask tool over here. Then let's change the quality from faster to better. This is what I always do. And then here I will turn on the overlay to be able to see my mask. And now I will simply draw a line on my subject. Like this. And voila, our mask is ready. So let's track it over here. Okay, done. But now I want to start from modifying my background, not the person. So I'll invert my mask over here. Okay, so now our background is isolated. And then I will maybe only just increase the blur radius a bit. Hopefully this will be enough. We can always use all of these refining tools later. And then I will turn my overlay off to be able to see the original clip. And the first thing I want to do is I want to darken the background a bit to bring more attention to the model. So I will go to my primary wheels and here I will just decrease the gamma a tiny bit. And this is before and after. Nice. And let's scroll through the clip. Perfect. Now, what we could also do is that we could actually combine the magic mask with a power window. So let's say that I want to darken only the right side of the background. So I can grab my power window over here. I will get the gradient. And this is how it works. So I will rotate it and I will place it on the right side of my clip. Then I will stretch it. And let's turn the highlight mode on here to be able to see the mask. Okay, so this is what we could do. This is before and after. But I want to darken the whole background. So let me remove the gradient. Okay, and now let's focus on our model. So let's create a new serial node. And here I will use log wheels to add more definition to her. And again, there's a great lesson covering using log wheels in my course. So I will not elaborate too much on it today. But let's label our node as log wheels. And now what we can do, we can pass the same magic mask onto this node. And we can reverse it. And we can do it by connecting these two blue alpha outputs. Like this. And now, when I turn my highlight mode on, I can see that our mask has been transferred from one node to another. But as I said, this time I want to adjust the model, not the background. So I have to reverse my mask. And I do it by going down here to key. And then I just have to select this button over here. So now the mask is reversed. So let's turn the highlight mode off and let's go to log wheels. And here I will increase my midtones first to add more light to the person. And then I will also decrease the shadows just a tiny bit. I'll basically play around with these controls like this. And this is before and after. And look at the difference we get when we combine the primary correctors with the log wheels. Very nice and sculpted. So now the model really stands out from the shot. And this is before adding our masks and corrections. And this is after. And then we could always go back to our original magic mask and we could go back to the primary wheels and we could modify the background even more. Like this. This is just to show you what we can do, but I prefer the previous look, so I will reset it. And now I want to add even more artificial lighting to my clip. So I'll create a new serial node and I will call it lighting. And now let's go to the power windows again and let's grab the round power window this time. And let's soften it and let's place it on the right side of the model's face like this and let's turn the highlight mode on 
and this time I will combine the power window with the qualifier, as I want to add some additional lighting only to the brightest parts of her face. So the only thing we need to do is to push the luminous slider up just to select the brightest parts, like this. And now I will soften it here and I'll improve my selection. This will work. So let's turn the highlight mode off and let's go to curves this time. And here I will push my white curve up a bit in the middle. And this is before and after. And now we obviously have to track our mask as this is a moving shot. And again, let's see the clip before applying masks and after. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. And once again, don't forget to click on the link below this video to enroll my color grading course. See you soon.